Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, welcome to this online course on legal language, legal including general English. This is lecture 14 and I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University. Today we are going to study Latin words and expressions, especially their usage in law registers. So with this note, we are going to start with our new lecture that is the information of legal maxims, legal terminologies and legal expressions. While composing, while drafting any kind of legal draft, any kind of law register, it could be any, any draft, right? Could be case laws, could be regulations, could be statutes, could be any kind of like uh, uh, you can say any kind of legal draft you require to employ legal maxims and legal terminologies because that is the thing which makes it different from rest of the writings, the casual routine writings that we generally go on. So with this note, let's start with something new as all of us, all the students who are sitting over here, they are from legal background. Uh, you people are doing BALLB, BCOM LLB and aspiring candidates for PCSJ. So, Believe me, if you are going to mesmerize these words, these legal terminologies, these maxims, these things are going to add one more feather to your writing skills. In our previous lectures, you have already understood that how you can definitely bring about a concise writing. You can draft uh, like all the legal documents by using syntactical patterns and then further in this way, you can definitely understand that how these things are done. So, in this condition, yes of course, let us start using all these things and let us start focusing on that aspect. So, let us begin with the learning outcomes. Here is the learning outcome of our lecture. After completing this lecture, all my dear learners, you all will be able to develop an understanding of the Latin maxims and phrases. There is an influence of Latin expressions, there is an influence of Latin and French language on legal English. Yes, of course, that is indeliable fact and if you want to be a good draftsman, yes, you have to learn these maxims and terminologies. With this note, yes, you would be able to analyze the application based on applications based on law registers. Without that, yes, of course, everything would be futile. Your work would not be an impressive one because these maxims in order to lend impressiveness to your work, please be very particular of using these legal maxims, legal terminologies, legal words because they are very important. Improve or include case laws in your examples, in your uh, like writing skills and then come up with the statutes everyone, come up with legal precedences because they are very important. So, with this note, these are the learning outcomes my dear learners. We are going to move further and in this case, now I am going to tell you what are the things that you are going to learn in this, the content part. And in this contents, you all will be learned what are legal maxims, how they have played an important role in the creation of an elite work of legal draft, legal importance and legal import of sentences, legal import of uh, you can say the, uh, the text the facts, compilation, so everything you would be very much perfect at. So introduction, you will learn what are legal maxims, how it makes it makes different from the regular work, then examples of legal maxims. With examples, I have tried to come up with specimens also, with specimens to use them in any kind of FIR, in some case laws, then in uh, various uh, statutes some kind of like uh, act if I am going to come up. So, like I have come up with certain examples where legal maxims could be easily utilized, employed 
examples of law registers and I will tell you what are law registers and what do you mean by them and how can you implement these fundamental uh, like uh, knowledge of legal maxims to make it more elevated. Reasons for employing legal maxims, so what is the reason behind employing it legal maxims? Legal maxims and phrases, so what is the reason you are going to run why, I told you why to use it and case where legal maxims are not used. So, at places we can definitely skip these things where you can definitely skip those these cases, they are really very much important right. So, with this note obviously we can move further towards the next part that what is the basic introduction of these legal maxims. These legal maxims are Latin expressions alma mater, sometimes cliche, sometimes some other words. So, Latin maxims and phrases have long been used in legal field to express complex legal concepts concisely and with precision. That is the most important point when you learn how to make it more concise. Instead of using long long lines for of explanation, you try to use 3 or 4 words, 3 or 4 words for that kind of explanation and in that condition you must learn that these things are really very much important. Instead of using long phrases, you come up with 3 4 words that is for legal maxims. Then further many of these legal maxims and phrases are derived from Latin because Latin was the language of scholarships and law in Europe for centuries and this is the reason why it continued to be like that. So, this is the introduction, but before that I would like to tell you a little bit about the history. Now, if I talk about the history my dear learners, you must know about this impact of Latin on our English. So, it began with cells, it began with cells in 55 BC to 80 to AD 410. Now, in this particular period what happened like cells actually original inhabitants of Britain, they were original inhabitants of Britain and and in that condition what happened when they were in they were original inhabitants of Britain, they tried to make a difference in the whole scenario and so in the period of that further it was invaded by Romans, it was invaded by Romans and that Roman empire actually flourished in that city and then when it flourished what happened? this Celt and Roman they resided together. So, now we will see that Latin plus Celtic. So, this thing became the combination of this whole scenario, the whole scenario that was residing at that time. So, in this condition what happens? It happened that now British invaded British Isles, who invaded British Isles? What is the question? So, invaded by Angles, Saxons and Jutes. So, these people actually invaded British Isles. Now, after this invasion what happened? This invasion what happens like Teutonic tribes, they are actually known as Teutonic tribes, Teutonic tribes of North Germany, of North Germany. This Teutonic tribes of North Germany invaded the, invaded the British. Is that clear everyone? Now, since these angel, angel, Saxons, Jutes, they invaded British. It, in this condition what happens? Roman flew away and then left cells all alone over here. So, thereafter what happened? These people in like till, till 18th century, till 18th century what happened? Anglo-Saxon was used, Anglo-Saxon was used to refer English. Is that clear? Till 18th century, but before that in 10th century basically 
what happened in 10th century that king alfred king alfred became interested became interested in english culture so basically what is my purpose of explaining you this whole thing is now look at me everyone when it comes to understanding part i have already explained that how the whole scenario changed how the whole system actually evolved from the beginning from cells it started from there and then british they came over then they then there was amalgamation of celtic and romans when they attacked it so, so latin and celtic they survived together after that when british isles were uh, attacked or invaded annexed by these three uh, teutonic tribes angles angles saxons angles saxons and jutes then what happened these angles these angles saxon and jutes they combined together to uh, norman conquest and then further like anglo saxon it it tried to came up or emerged as a huge unit and that influenced the entire thing that is the reason why latin actually influence could be seen very well in our legal terminologies and legal facts and from there like till now there is a very big indelible impact of latin language on our legal english so now you have understood that why is it important and from there i will definitely in the second lecture i have already explained that what is the history of legal english after that history of legal english i have explained that what is the uh, basic uh, framework on which our indian legal english is dependent on and then i have discussed about the regional languages also i have discussed about the legal uh, regional legal language also so that like you have all the idea second third fourth fifth lectures they already dealt with all these things this is just a kind of framework that i'm trying to create for legal maxims so how these legal maxims are intertwined with latin and french with latin and french this is very important so because it began with celts and then norman conquest this anglo saxon period and then further this left an implement that impression impression on uh, latin english so uh, therefore this is the whole thing the history and then further let's talk about legal maxims how these legal maxims are employed i have taken few examples of them almost like there are many there are uh, many many legal maxims i would not be able to discuss all of them over here maybe but yes some of them i have considered they are really very important most of the time they are used every now and then so you can definitely ponder your attention towards them so let's talk about actus reus non facet reum nisi mens sit rea so this is translation used for english in english if i say english translation of them is an act does not make person guilty unless there is a guilty mind so an act does not make person guilty unless there is a guilty mind application of this thing is this maxim underscores the principle that criminal act actus reus actus reus means criminal act alone is not enough to establish criminal liability that means the criminal liability is not responsible of that criminal act there must also be a criminal intent that means intention should be there without criminal intention if something is done you cannot call that person as a criminal means ria means ria both elements are typically required for conviction in criminal cases so actus reus non facet reum nisi mens sit ria can be used as the legal maxim for person for any crime that is not done an act does not make a person guilty unless that is done without the criminal intention or guilty mind unless there is a guilty mind so this can be used in fir while lodging an fir while lodging a case deed it is very important next one if i am going to focus on ignorantia legis neminem excusate so ignorantia legis neminem excusate 
you can definitely translate translate this thing is ignorance ignorantia of the law ledges excuses no one excuses no one have you understood the meaning i tried to come up with word by word explanation of each and everything right so when you talk about these terms like first of all ignorantia ignorantia means ignorance of the law ledges is of the law then neminem excuse it that means excuses no one that means it is not essential for one person to actually go on with ignorant nature with ignorant behavior remember and in that condition application this principle means that individuals are generally expected to know obey the law claiming ignorance of the law is not valid defense in most cases right so you cannot actually claim that if i am ignorant you can definitely change this word accordingly or if somebody is ignorant don't know about the law it doesn't mean that he has not committed any crime he has really committed the crime ignorance doesn't help you to protect from that aspect remember so this is very much important now moving up to the next side that fiat justicia ruet calum now fiat justicia ruet calum what is the translation let justice be done through the heavens fall so let justice be done means let fiat justicia can you highlight this thing fiat justicia let justice be done through heavens fall ruat kalam that means be done through heavens fall that means let justice be done by god's hand so in that condition this maxim emphasizes the importance of upholding justice of upholding means of upholding the justice and even in the face of potential consequences or difficulties no matter the decision is really difficult to take but still in potential difficulties also this decision cannot be changed it underscores the principle that the pursuit of justice should be unwavering the pursuit of justice is unwavering unwavering means it cannot be changed that means no matter if the situation is difficult but still a person cannot run away from the repercussions of that activity that means like whatever the sequence whatever the consequences are the repercussions are but still you cannot change the law if you are responsible if you are the criminal if you are the culprit you have to face the challenges yes so you have to face the repercussions now moving further i must come to the next legal maxim so here we have learned three legal maxims everyone this is first one actus reus non facit reum nisi mens sit rea second one ignorantia legis neminem excusat and third one fiat justicia ruet calum so i have already come up with the translation and explaining it in Hing in english in pure english so that you can understand it but but using these legal maxims is really very important next one is in dubio pro rio in dubio pro rio so translation is in doubt in dubio in doubt for the accused pro rio is for the accused so in doubt for the accused accused someone who is uh, the victim of it this principle highlights the presumption of innocence in criminal cases innocence in criminal cases when there is a doubt when there is some kind of uh, chances of savior or uncertainty about a person's guilt the benefit of doubt should generally favor the accused so that means in doubt for the accused if there is any kind of doubt if the person has some kind of like in a doubtful situation the benefit of doubt is given to the accused remember and in that you can definitely lead to the negative side and this person can definitely be free from that situation now in this condition remember that in the benefit of doubt a person or accused is referred or is freed from that particular crime in the benefit of doubt situation so what is the legal maxim that is used in doubt in doubt of the excused that means in dubio pro rio that is in doubt for the accused 
So next one is caveat emptor. Caveat emptor is the next one. Now in this condition caveat emptor is the next one that means let the buyer beware. This is a very common term I have used in case laws also. When some people feel, felt betrayed and knocked the doors of consumer court. Now, now you can just look at me and find the relevance that when caveat emptor is there that means let the buyer beware consumer court the consumer uh, goods manufacturer that has used this caveat emperor emptor term in his uh, works in his uh, allegations type where let the buyer beware. So it is your responsibility as a buyer to be aware about all these things about all these pros and cons you are not going to claim me for that right. So caveat emptor let the buyer beware this is actually the plus point of the manufacturer side. If they have used this particular term on any paper on any product then definitely the people are responsible buyers are responsible for all the mishaps. So let us talk about this application this maxim is often used in contract law. I told you from the side of manufacturer contract law and signifies that buyer should be cautious and responsible for inspecting and understanding the terms of a contract or the condition of goods before making a purchase. This is again a very important thing suppose I am going to purchase now look at this and understand the whole scenario now if I am going to purchase a piece of land and in that condition if somebody is going to uh, if, if somebody is I am just preparing a contract, contract law then in that condition when I draft that contract law as a legal advisor I would certainly incorporate this caveat emptor. The term caveat emptor because this term is going to help you out to understand all these points and in that condition you must know that this thing is really very much important. So in that condition like you have to understand if I am signing a contract uh, as a manufacturer side or in that condition the owner will certainly use the caveat answer to indicate that let the buyers beware of everything that I am trying to convey right. So in that condition you have learned the usage of this particular legal maxim very well in that condition. Now my, my dear learners you have to understand the usage of these legal maxims it is not only learning them and meaning and their meanings but usage of those mean those legal maxims in your work is really very important. Now let us move up to the next side that is Nemo that quad non habit. Now in this condition Nemo that quad non habit that is the translation no one gives no one Nemo no one gives what they do not have no one gives what they do not have do not non habit do not have. So this thing clearly indicates that no one gives what they do not have means this maxim is a fundamental in property law whenever you come up with any kind of property law and means that person cannot transfer ownership of something they do not own possess legal rights. Now in this condition let me give you one example suppose in that condition if I say that I am going to sell off my property parental property and I do have the papers but papers are not in my name I do not have the property uh, in my name basically Dr. Divya Gupta does not have it maybe like uh, maybe somebody else uh, her uncle might be having it or some other some others name is there now in that condition this girl Dr. Divya Gupta cannot send that property to anyone because since it is not I am not using because and since together rather since it does not belong to Divya Gupta she cannot sell that property to anyone else so therefore whenever is there is a kind of selling in that purpose you can use this legal maxim since this property does not belong to Dr. Devya Gupta how she could sell it to anyone else therefore this legal maxim is very much applicable over here. Now in this condition look at this Nemo debt quad non habit Nemo debt quad non habit clearly indicates that you cannot sell the property which does not belong to you. So this is the appropriate use of that particular maxim with this note we can move further where Yes, this is one of my favorite res ipsa locutor, locutor, res ipsa locutor the meaning of that one is this the thing speaks for itself, 
thing speaks for itself that means application in tort law. This maxim suggests that a, if an injury or harm occurs under circumstances where it would not typically occur unless someone was negligent, the burden of proof may shift to the defendant to explain why the harm happened. Understood? So, let the things speak for itself. If there is a kind of claim, if somebody is claiming for the damages occurred in the accident, in that accident if the person's car uh, is totally completely broken down because of that accident. So, in that condition let that object speak for itself. That means like the total the broken parts of that uh, car should be reflected in that and the proper pictures, proper authentication proofs should be mentioned in that. So, that you can definitely cannot run away from this fact that it has actually happened. So, in that condition res ipsa locutor res ipsa locutor clearly indicates let the things itself speak for itself. So, the things speaks for itself this is again a very important one ok. Then we can say star decisis, star decisis is again to stand by things decided, to stand by things decided means this legal doctrine highlights the importance of precedent. Precedence is anything, any action, any case law that is any case law that has happened earlier that may be used may be used as a foundation as a foundation for upcoming upcoming case clear. So, that is precedent in the common law system courts often rely on prior decisions whatever decisions have been taken earlier when making judgments and strive to maintain consistency in legal principles right. So, stand to stand by things decided. Suppose if I say if I take up the example of any case law Keshav Nanda Bharti case. Keshav Nanda Bharti case then in that condition I can definitely say that on the basis of this case uh, this uh, 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 basically this case law I can definitely speak something more about those fundamental rights and change in constitution etcetera. So, star decisis means that to stand by things to stand by things decided in that condition whatever is there whatever proof is there whatever like the case is something is standing to assist it something is standing to support it. So, without that support you would not be able to con, uh, create your own rule, create your own theory. So, this is very important understood star decisis this is very important the another legal maxim. Let us move further with law registers as if I told you that till now you have understood what are legal maxims, how they can be formed, how things are done in a proper manner. Now, you have to understand that how these legal maxims and legal terminologies be used in law register. When it comes to law register what are these law registers? These are of various types and when it comes to various types remember that law registers are like any draft you can say any legal draft let me clear it any legal draft. Now, when it comes to legal draft they are of different types like if it could be trust, it could be trust it could be deed it could be ordinance right then it could be indentures indentures then it could be yes of course statute it could be wills yes it could be regulations regulations my dear learners it could be lease so these are law registers on the basis of these things you have to understand that how these law registers can employ legal maxims. A law register typically refers to a record keeping system. You might have seen those ledgers, long ledgers in the same manner we have something, some documents where under which we can keep the records. So, record keeping registers are have turned up in the name of law registers and in that condition or a database that contains information related to laws, regulations and legal documents. It is a tool remember this is a tool 
used by legal professionals, government agencies and the public to access and references legal information. Law registers can take various forms including physical books, I am going to refer cite them at the end, online database, yes some kind of uh, you can say uh, links are there. Then digital platforms are also available to prove this. So, these are law registers, remember I have already told you about these things that they could be trust, wills, deeds, laws, statutes, regulations, sometimes constitution, all these things amalgamate together to form up law registers. So, now you are going to learn how these law registers, how these legal magazines, legal terminologies, legal words could be employed in law registers. All the legal documents could be considered as law registers. They are record keeping documents in short. So, for your understanding my dear learners, you have to go through this part. Now, let us talk about different law registers, how are you going to use them according to the purpose according to the objectives. So, the first one is statutes. In this statutes, the official text of laws passed by legislatures at the federal, state and local levels, they are statutes. Okay? So, the statutes are official text of laws passed by legislatures. Then we have regulations, we have regulations, rules and regulations then promulgated by government agencies to implement and enforce statutes. So, whatever statutes are you just use them, you just use them perfectly in your regulation act, in your regulations and that actually after statutes you form regulations that could be applied in this and then further we use case laws. I told you that case laws we have landmark cases and we have landmark cases and we have recent cases, right. Now, when we have landmark cases, yes, we have Keshav Nanda Bharti's case, we have several other, many I have already discussed it several times uh, in previous lectures. Legal commentary is also there, like in this legal commentary, you must know that articles and commentaries, legal analysis related to specific legal topics uh, or issues is uh, included in that. And then further, we should focus, focus on certain aspect when it comes to this description and uh, let us move up to the next slide where we are going to learn the example. Through certain examples, I am going to tell you how these legal maxims could be used, some legal words could be used, some circumlocutions could be used, some other words, archaic words would be used. So, be ready to employ all the knowledge that you possess everyone in that condition example of case law. Now, look at this, the case of Doe versus Smith, look this is a fictional one. This is a fictional uh, uh, like case law that I am coming up with. So, the case of Doe and Smith, a recent decision in the jurisdiction, Supreme Court presents a nuanced exploration of the doctrine of res ipsa liquitur. Now, do you remember in my previous lecture, I told you what is in, in the previous slide only I told you about res ipsa liquitur, what is the meaning of that? That means the things speaks for itself, the things speaks for, for itself. Now in this condition the meaning of this word is, this legal maxim is this, okay? let me clear it, yes legal maxim. So, legal maxim the things it speaks for itself and the application to medical malpractice claims the court's ruling based on a thorough examination of the evidence, evidence is proof and legal precedence sheds no light, sheds on the uh, light on the intricacies of establishing negligence in the medical field. So, if there is a kind of uh, negligence in the medical field, let the things speak for itself. Let there be any kind of repercussions reflected on that or you can say the kind of uh, results or consequences faced by that thing would, would speak on its own. So, this is the example of using legal maxim in any case law. There are many case laws like this, multiple you can say and you will find the uh, several examples related to it. 
in every each and every case laws because they are really very much important. Further moving towards the example of warranty deed. Now in this condition when we have the example of warranty deed, you must know that how warranty deed should be written and what is the implications, format, using of uh, legal terminologies, legal words, legal uh, like uh, uh, you can say dictionaries for that. Sometimes let, let's take about this, this indenter, the deed made this date, so date would be by and between. So this is the warranty deed and this indenter, the name of the deed made this date by and between two parties, grantor and grantee, these two parties are there, grantor and grantee, okay. So legal name of grantor, Mr. XYZ and Grantors address, yes, anything, you can write down cities, state, zip code, pin code number, grantee's name, again legal name of grantee, you can definitely write the legal name. Remember when it is uh, about the legal name, it should be there in your Aadhaar card. When it is there in your Aadhaar card, pen card, definitely that name will be used, okay. So be very particular about this address of the grantees address, then further city zip, so both the things will take personal details first of all, personal details of those people, clear, after personal details, now what is the deed, you will come up with the deed aspect, like which kind of deed am I going to talk, is it a kind of deed when I am trying to give my property, I am going to sell off my property to this person, that is a deed, so try to Come up with grantor and grantee, two parties are there and I am the seller and the other one is buyer. So grantor and grantee, now in this condition look at this, for and in consideration of the sum of purchase price, this is the purchase price, USD and other good valuable consideration, the receipt and the receipt and sufficiency of which are hereby, hereby acknowledged. The grantor conveys and warrants to the grantee of the following described real property situated in the country, India, county, India, state, Uttar Pradesh, like this, Uttar Pradesh and legally described as follows. So the address will also come in this whole thing. Name of the place where I am going to do this whole thing, warranty deed. About that you are going to discuss about the legal description of the property, like at which particular place you have that property is actually sell, sold off. Now to have and to hold, this is in capital, look please be very particular about capitalization. Yesterday uh, in my previous lecture also I told about preamble. I hope you remember, in preamble also I have given some examples where you have understood how to use capitalization in a proper manner. Now in this condition you must remember that capitalization, punctuation marks, whether it be comma, am dash, co uh, full stop, period, apostrophe, all these things play, ellipses, all these things play an important role when it comes to legal drafting. So here we have understood that in that this kind of to have and to hold is a kind of word where we have to understand it. The above described premises together with all and singular, the, up, the, up, uh, the appurtenances and privileges there too, I am using this there too and then above described premises together with all and singular, this yes, belonging to in any wise appertaining unto the grantee and the grantee's heirs and assigns forever. So everyone, like suppose if Divya is selling, if Dr. Divya is selling something, so Divya and Divya's and Divya's heirs also assigns forever. Nobody can claim afterwards and the grantor does hereby covenant with the grantee grantees hears and assigns that at and until the unsealing of these presents, the grantor will is well seized, grantor is well seized of the premises, has good right to convey the same and guarantees, guarantees is 
you can say this is a kind of authentication you can give authentication that you are trying to give the quiet possession thereof after that they are off to the grantee grantee's heirs and assigns against all lawful claims and demands so no one can no one from grantee's side side may claim after this deed right so grantor has executed now in in witness whereof this is very important look my capitalization is used to highlight the main words to highlight the main aspect where we are not going to skip anything for example if i am talking about after that thereafter i am using that, that thereof then further if while using the evidence witness witness is again a very important in, in front of whom i am just trying to make that deed so witness is also very important so that is all these three things are in capital letter believe me everyone when you write when you draft anything legal legal documents capitalization plays an important role so this is a live example where you can understand this fact that capitalization is integral when it comes to witness i'm just uh, yes removing this part just to highlight this important point in witness where of so we have witnesses also all around the grantor has executed this deed deed is also in capital of the date first above the written so have you understood this fact that you are going to capitalize everything that is given that is important to you relevant information you cannot skip and run away from this fact so therefore they have used capital letters in that condition to highlight the major points yes so let's move up to the next slide where we are going to discuss the last part of that deed how are we going to use those legal maxims to make it more enticing so at the end we are going to use signature of the grantor printed name of the grantor yes so printed name of the grantor and believe me that will be related to the aadhar card or pan card any legal document that you have authentic document so state of if there is any like yes uttar pradesh that i told you then uh, country uh, india then further on the this date before me a notary public in and for said county and state personally appeared name of the grantor known to me to be the person whose name this is supposed to be done by witness side clear the witness side so name of the grantor known to me to be the person whose name is subscribed to the foregoing instrument and acknowledged that acknowledged is answerable and answerable that they executed the same for the purpose therein contained therein contained it included witness my hand and official seal here notary public signature notary seal okay so you might have heard about 15 uh, like you can talk about the affidavit all these deeds are done on legal papers they are affidavits 10 rupees stamp paper sometimes so all these things are written on those uh, legal affidavits only where where we have to get it notarized also at the end this is again a very important point so notary is important and on the legal document that is affidavit so with this you have understood that how deeds are written how you can perform a wonderful creation how you can definitely create a an impressive uh, writing by using those legal maxims and legal words legal terminologies but don't be very ambiguous while making use of those things clear everyone so let's move up to the next side and let's talk about other forms also how can you bring about a change in your scenario by bringing up the legal forms by talking about the legal forms by talking about legal notices use of those things in legal notices also whenever you receive whenever anyone receives the summon from any other side from government side that this uh, property has been sealed for some notice some purpose so notice from government side or maybe there is a legislative records in legislative records also you may find several examples of certain types where legal maxims could be used and then for the legal database for legal database also we use these type of things the legal maxims legal terminologies without them obviously they would not be 
So, let us focus on this uh, templates and standardized legal documents into includes this part, then legal notices we have, public notices are there, announcements are there, uh, legal advertisements required by law. You might have heard about this thing uh, written in interest of pub, uh, like public interest or uh, written in public interest, public interest, right or uh, sometimes for mutual funds also, for mutual funds also. What is the statutory lines that are there at the end? Risk factor is also involved. Read the uh, read the documents carefully since risk factors are also involved. So, because risk factor is involved, they are giving these statutory notes at the end to make the people aware that no, whatever I am giving in advertisement is not true. You have to read, go through the entire document on your own and then you can definitely revert. So, this is again a very important part that in legal notices also we use such type of legal uh, like maxims and legal uh, terminologies. Legal legislative records are also there like uh, bills are there, amendments are there, legislative histories are there, then database is also there that means legal information, conduct legal research, whenever there is a legal scholars are there, legal scholars are there, they collect data they collect facts, they collect uh, some uh, experiences of some experiences of judges, of judges, you can say their verdict, their verdict, they discuss those verdicts and they interpret them in a proper manner, right, they interpret them. So, this is what uh, legal scholars used to do and in that condition this is again a very important part. Further we use why is it important to use these legal maxims. So, yes of course, of course like whenever something is given to you, something is asked to use, is there any kind of importance to it? Yes, you can definitely make it, uh, it provides actually the, uh, the life to your work, to your data or to your structure, whatever you are writing. Right. So, it is the reason, what is the reason of employing maxims on phrases? How does it make it more interesting? You have to understand that part. So, clarity and precession, this is again a very important thing. You must know that it provides clarity and precession. And when it comes to clarity and precession, yes of course, legal maxims, phrases, they give, they kind, they make the communication more effective and understand the fundamental principles of law. So, because clarity, precession, Coherence, they are three principles of drafting any document. Preservation of legal tradition. So, what is legal tradition? Because this legal maxim is, is very well known to Britain, to people sitting in Britain, to people sitting in Europe, to people sitting in India, to any continent you may say, like anything anywhere in the world. Okay, so, you must have the idea that this is a universal language and it actually preserves the legal uh, tradition because you can definitely understand the legal maxims and legal terminologies across the world people sitting there. It is not a big deal that, uh, that only uh, AVC will be able to understand. It, even XYZ who is sitting far off place can understand this point because this is universal. Right, so using legal maxims, legal community maintains a connection to its historical and cultural roots. I told you that influence of influence of Latin and French, Latin and French is important over here. Right, so uniformity and consistency. Third point, why this is important to bring about a uniformity in each and every in each and every document that is that is drafted no matter it is drafted in India or anywhere else. So, this becomes the, it, it brings up uniformity, consistency because it follows the same format, okay, because it follows the same principles, fundamental principles of writing, of writing, right, because it follows the uh, same statutes many times, some same case laws. Okay, so, time to time it may change, but 
more over each and every person who are related with this whether it be world uh, legal authorities everyone would be using the same thing. So, interpretation and legal decisions would be almost consistent similar and which reduces likelihood of inconsistent ruling in different jurisdictions. So, even in uh, Supreme Court pe uh, people will be able to understand the whole thing, High Court will be able to understand the whole thing. Then uh, if you have different local courts also then also like you can definitely you would be understood in a proper manner. It is not like it would uh, the meaning would not change, maybe the interpretation will change. Yes, so with this yes of course, we are going to move further that legal precedent and predictability. Legal precedent and predictability would be same if the legal maxims are comparatively used in the same manner. So, legal maxims are often support used to support the legal arguments and establish legal precedent. When courts take the example, when courts consistently rely on these maxims, it creates a sense of predictability in the law allowing individuals to business make informed decisions. And yes of course, interpretation and clarity, interpretations and clarity whatever I am interpreting even the person from the other side of that world would be interpreting the same thing. It is not like he would come up with some different version of the interpretation because these legal maxims the meaning is universal. Education and legal training, whenever this is the point where it differentiates from regular writing and that is the reason why education and legal training is makes it different. Legal maxims are important part of legal education and training, law students and aspiring lawyers study these maxims to gain fun foundational understanding of legal principles. Yes of course, if I talk about different uh, legal maxims by learning them you all can prepare yourself very well for PCSJ. By learning and employ, uh, employing them in legal essays also you would be able to acquire good marks in PCSJ and UPSC exams because out of 5 uh, at least you have to appear in 2 uh, essay writing over there. So, this is again a very important part if you would be able to come up with legal maxims, case laws, statutes and regulations. Further yes of course, you can definitely talk about presumption, presumption of innocence. Presumption of innocence nobody can use any kind of like didactic tone or something like that because certain maxims such as innocent until proven guilty. This is again a very important one, innocent we cannot claim anyone as a criminal, use the word criminal for anyone who is still in the process of attaining the judgment. So, innocent until proven guilty emphasize fundamental legal principles like in presumption of innocence. We are presuming something, we are assuming that this person is not a criminal rather the case is going on. So, without that which is a cornerstone of criminal law. Yes, legal tradition and authority it indicates the it is the tradition and authority where we cannot actually run away from this. But there are some uh, in the coming upcoming slide also like I am going to tell you where you can skip those legal maxims. There are some places where you can skip those legal maxims and of course, this is a, a kind of historical significance where you can definitely correlate it with history also. So, because it is a preservance, preservance and then honor legal traditions and values. Now, in this condition you must know that through legal maxims first of all you would be able to create clarity, precision, co then cogency, then further it is a it is an indication of legal tradition and historical context. Further it is a kind of it adds the universal tone to the entire working uh, uh, like uh, entire working class uh, of legal authorities. Then further you should talk about efficiency in legal communication when we use uh, these legal maxims. This is the last part of our uh, slide when we know that where we can avoid these legal maxims or where we can see that no it cannot be used without it can be done without using those legal maxims when it comes for uh, any legal uh, drafting on the basis of AI. If, we, if there is a case of AI for example, emerging technologies in that condition yes of course, you can definitely skip those things. If the case is related to AI or blockchain technology, the law can definitely skip that part. 
and develop new principles. Third, secondly, it, if it is related to legislation and statutory interpretation, if somebody is actually trying to come up to explain those statutes, not using them for explanation, but explaining those statutes in order to make it more clear, you cannot actually use them again. So, in that condition, these uh, while explaining these uh, statutory interpretations, principles and canons, specific rules for interpreting legislations, in that condition these legal maxims stand, take a back seat. Customary and tribal law, in customary and tribal laws also we can skip those legal maxims and legal terminologies. For example, particularly tribal communities, legal maxims are actually more influential. So, you cannot, you can avoid them while using them explaining the legal traditions. Further, you can definitely skip them when there is a negotiation, negotiated settlements and settlements are based on compromises and agreement between parties rather than adherence to established legal principles. So, in that condition when negotiation is there, you can definitely avoid using these legal maxims. Then international law, so this is the thing, when international law is there, of course, the legal disputes are there in that international legal disputes application of legal maxims may vary. If I am using this word, this maxim, they may definitely make a different sense in specific treaty based on the usage and uh, convention or international law framework. So, we avoid using in international law uh, disputes. Last, yes, equity and fairness could be uh, like in that equity and fairness, we try to focus is often principles of fairness and justice rather than strict adherence to legal maxims. So, equity allows judges to exercise discretion and consider individual circumstances. So, yes, here we have learned that these things could be avoided and in administrative law, in modern legal writing, whenever we talk about modern legal writing or administrative writings, obviously these legal maxims are often skipped out because they have different way of writing and terminologies, it's modern legal terminologies to enhance clarity and accessibility rather using legal maxims. So, here at the end I would like to conclude uh, with this note that if you are going to use legal maxims that will add one more feather to your work and one more like you can say you can make it more elevated. Because you say that uh, without using those legal maxims, your word, your work or your draft would not appeal anyone. So, therefore, legal maxims and phrases, they serve to make it more concise and enduring expressions of importance for legal principles and concepts. Because these legal maxims, they bring about a uniformity in the whole scenario and it brings consistency, fairness in legal system. So, with this note, yes, these are the references that I have taken uh, referred to Black Law's Dictionary, then Dictionary for Legal Usage, here from here I have taken these uh, Stroud's Dictionary, then uh, Red Book, a Manual on Legal Style, then Duen's Legal Dictionary. So, from here I have taken those legal maxims and uh, other references, uh, my dear learners. So, yes, of course, uh, with these, with the help of these legal maxims, legal terminologies, legal words, you can definitely elevate your style and elevate your draft law registers. Thank you everyone, I am Dr. Divya Gupta signing off for now, wish you all the best to be a perfect draftsman of legal documents. Thank you everyone.